Pastor Stein right there. Good morning, good morning. I was going to put one of these weird faces on this morning, but I chose not to do it. You have the mustache. You could have saw me in a sunglasses and a, and a hat and everything on. That would have been kind of interesting. Welcome to Set Talks today. This is Pastor Set. Uh, looking forward to a one. Listen, I thought today was sexy. Saturday? And it's Friday, right? It's actually Friday. And um, I thought, you know what? It's Friday today. I better get myself over here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes that happens when you don't have to actually go into a uh, physical job situation. You know, you don't have to clock in or that kind of thing. You kind of lose track of the time once in a while. That happens on occasion. Well, good morning. Good morning. Bless you today. Looking forward to just spending a little bit of time with this morning and uh, give me a thought for the day, but also a prayer at the end of our time together. Uh, this is said talks again i just come here and talk <laughs> that's what i do i'm said and i do the talking and i have a chance to communicate with some folks that i i don't know personally so yeah i don't know personally but i've met you maybe maybe met some of you personally but uh, hey it's good to see you. I met, i've met you before bless you good to see you today but we are looking forward to asking a, a wonderful question what are you waiting for what are you waiting for we know we know that at the end of the year we are preparing ourselves to just move right on into 2018 a brand new year and we get excited about the, the day, the actual day, for January 1st, 2018. That is our day to get started. But why are we waiting? Okay, what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? I tell you, the things that we can get accomplished right now uh, will be a big, big, big boost to us because we can roll into 2018 as opposed to just, just showing up and saying, well, now it's time to start. <laughs> roll into it. I mean, launch into it. Uh, make a concerted effort to say, I'm going to make make it a big splash moving into this new year and make it something real special. I'm not waiting on anybody else's permission. I'm going to go ahead and do it now, you know, because God, God's with me right now. He's, not, he's a now God. He's a now, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Not, you know, tomorrow, not next day, not uh, a week from now, not, you know, no, now. Now is the time. Now is the day of salvation. Today's the day of salvation, rather. And so we look at what we're doing right now and say, now what, what in the world am I doing waiting? What in the world am I doing waiting? And who am I waiting for? What am I waiting for? Why am I waiting? Whose permission am I looking for? Ask yourself those questions about what you're waiting for, because often we were doing things and we're waiting on somebody else's permission. We're waiting on somebody else to say, give, give us the go ahead. We're waiting on people to join our team. We're waiting. We're waiting on a whole lot of different things. But I'll tell you, we write the vision. We make it plain. And he who reads it runs with it. We'll be the first one to read it. Right. We're the first ones to read it. So we got to be the first ones running with it. Let's run now. It didn't, it didn't say, okay, write the vision, make it plain, and he that read it runs with it on July July 20th, 1925. No, no. It Write the vision, make it plain, so that he who reads it will run with it. So run with it now. It's a good, this, as soon as we get to read the vision, as soon as we catch a hold of the vision that God's given us, run. I mean run. Don't wait. Don't slow. Don't wait to pass gold. Just, just run. Okay. And that's when people begin to catch a hold of us as well. When they see us running, people uh, follow our example. They follow our lead. If you're leading in a capacity and you need other folks to come alongside you, uh, be doing something. Be caught Be caught moving so that you're not just caught sitting still. Because sitting sitting still, they're kind of, well, you know, I'm, I'm, right, I'm right with you right now. I'm here with you. I'm here with you. What, what are we doing? We're just sitting still. And see, sitting still doesn't do anything. All we're doing is just kind of just pass the time away. We're twiddling our thumbs a little bit, trying to figure out what's going to happen next in life. But when we begin to run and not be weary, walk and not faint, see ourselves moving beyond where we have been, what are we waiting for? We're going to go ahead and get ourselves going. Good morning, George. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Angela. Bless you. And today, I'm telling you, this morning as we prepare ourselves uh, for today, this is the only day we've got, right? We prepare ourselves for today. Let's think about something. Let's not wait till January 1st, 2018 to make that big mark, to make that big splash in life. Let's do it today. Let's make a concerted effort to say, you know, this is the day the Lord's made for real. And I'm going to rejoice and be glad about it because what he's doing right now. This is the most important time we've got is right now. Jan January 1st, a lot of folks are kind of waiting and kind of got the wait and see attitude. And it has this great expectation for something magical to happen on that day. But let me tell you something. Magic can happen today. I mean, something can happen today in your life that would be so dramatic that it would pale in comparison to things that would happen on another day. So we've only got now. So go go ahead and do it now. Don't wait. Listen, you don't even need my permission for that, by the way. You've got your own permission. You've got your own permission. You serve the same God I serve. He's given you permission to walk in, in newness of life. He's given you permission to live this life out the way he, he's desired for you to live it out. Hey, Craig, bless you. Good to see you this morning. And it says, when you look at what we're waiting for what are we waiting what are we waiting for let's do it let's make it happen 
Let's go for it and see to it that uh, people have a chance to see. You know what? They didn't wait around. They weren't fooling around. They took advantage of everything that was in front of them. Other folks were sitting on the sideline waiting for the first and waiting for the gun to go off. This is not that kind of race. We were waiting for a gun to go off so we can begin to run. The gun's already gone off a long time ago. When we were born and then born again, the gun went off then, and we had a chance to move out. Rick, good to see you, brother. Bless you. Listen, some people ask me about this picture in the back of me right here. That's an antique that my wife picked up uh, some somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where. But uh, people say this reminds them of somebody special in their life. It may be an ancestor of our, we don't even know that ourselves, but but that that's what that is. I'm not sure exactly what that is. People ask me all the time, who, who is that picture in the background? Is that a relative or a friend? It could be, I don't know. I'm not quite sure. But listen, to, tell you this, something about people of the old times, I'm telling you this, folks of old time used to get up and do stuff. And we see all these uh, these inventions that have been done in the last 100 years. It's not a long time, by the way. We, we've been on, listen, we're, we're in the 21st century right now, right? But in the last 100 years, there have been some major inventions that have taken place, and there have been a lot of people that, that have been involved in those inventions and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the inventions and, and, and new thoughts and ideas and new concepts have been uh, introduced. And as those new concepts have been introduced, it's been people that weren't waiting for dates. It's been people that weren't waiting for, for the perfect time. There are people that failed and failed and failed again, but they started and started and started again as well. Those are the folks that make differences in life. Uh, very good to see you, brother. Bless, bless you. You know, so those are the folks that make differences in life. But we've had a lot of things happen in, one, in a 100-year span that have just changed our world. You look at automobiles to horse and buggy. You look at airplanes to, you know, not helicopter, not even helicopter, horse and buggy. Again, going back that way. We'll go, go way back and look at the astronauts going to the, to the, to the moon and what have you. And now look at, look at uh, transportation the way it used to be. And, and then look at, looking, at, looking at the way homes used to be made and the way the homes are made today, even back in that time. If you look at, we live in a, a home that's, a, that's 1912, I believe it is, 1912, solid as a rock. There are homes all around the neighborhood that have been, been, been made in 19, 1900s and 1800s that are solid as a rock. Some of these newer homes are you know, sometimes having difficulty, having complications. You know, and, we, and not that we have to not have to fix things in our home. But the reality is that even folks at that time that were creating and, and, and demonstrating, they weren't waiting around. They were getting things done with what they had, the skill level that they had. They had to really begin to think. They didn't have all the modern technology and, and press a button and the, and the answer come out and they'd be able to understand exactly what to do at that point. They had to think it through and collaborate with other people and begin to meditate and begin to come up with ideas and hear God on the matter. And then when they begin to hear God, they didn't wait around. They heard God and moved out. And so what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for right now? Is there anything that's special going on in your life that you need to make an adjustment about and, and say, you know, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to give myself some time to, to push myself a little bit more. I tell you, sometimes it's, uh, the technology that we have available to us kind of weakens our, our position of, of understanding who we really are. I tell you, when we begin to think on our own, own accord, we begin to meditate on the Word of God, we begin to, to get ourselves in a position where we say, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grasp some new stuff in my mind right now. I'm going to let my mind begin to, to, uh, to identify with what's really going on in the spirit realm so that the things that I don't see, I have a chance to see in the natural as a result of me spending time with God, who is, who is the one that's creator of all, all heavens and earth, the heavens and the earth. So with that being in mind, we can accomplish a whole lot, a whole lot. Not having to wait on my new phone to show up or my, my new computer to show up or the new programmer to show up in the building so we can program the computer so we can get some answers right. Listen, go back old school on occasion. Go back old school. I'd, I'd imagine sometimes that even people would go back old school and, and people wouldn't even have a clue what to do. If you forget about how how do you add up a one plus one when people don't have a clue what to do? I mean, how do you sign your name? There are young people that don't even know how to sign their name. I'm talking about in cursive, sign their name. It, it's a foreign concept to them. All they've ever done is spend time on their phones and and, and doing all this stuff here and to sign their what's a signature? What do you mean signature? I don't know. I don't know what that is. You know. So think about it now. Think about it. Let's use our nuggets. Let's use our minds. Let's use our the, the let's use this body. Let's use this. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. 
So let's take advantage of what God's given us and not, not put ourselves in a position where we have to wait on people. We're the only person we're waiting on. The only person we're waiting on is waiting on the Lord. And in that capacity, we're serving him and doing what he would have us to do. And right now, I'm telling you, there's a time in, uh, that's approaching us that's exciting and everything. But I'm telling you this, that if right now is more important to you than the future down the road, listen, take advantage of right now. Because right now is all you have. Right now is all we've got. It's the only thing that will keep us motivated in this moment. It's the only thing that keeps us inspired in this moment. It's the only thing that, listen, right now, it's the only thing that keeps us thinking that we can do something that's going to take us beyond this, this next few seconds or so. It's gonna, the only thing that, the only knowledge that we have is the knowledge that we've acquired up to this point and when, right now. So let's take advantage of watching what God will do in our lives on today. I'm telling you, it's an exciting time to be alive, an exciting time to, to not have to wonder, wonder or wander, by the way, wonder or wonder about what in the world is going to go on with life. Oh, we can do so many great things with this mind of ours. We've got the mind of Christ. We can, we can begin to understand that we hear with the ear of the Spirit and begin to speak out of our mouths with thus saith the Lord and begin to hear and understand that God's got a plan that's greater than our own plans. This is a great time to be alive, guys. Great time to be alive. So ask yourself the question, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Is there something special you have to get in order to make the next, make step, next step? Oh, it may not be the biggest step that you want to make. I mean, listen, it may not be the, the big accomplishment. It may not be the finality of a project that you've got going. But there's something going on today that, that, you, that, that can be done. Either it's meditating or praying or, or actually implementing a particular part of the project that, you, that you've got engaged. Do that with full, full vigor. Go after it with full the imagination that you've been, that you've seen. You've seen it in your mind's eye. If you've been dreaming and having visions and ideas that have been coming to your mind, begin to put those things into action right now. How can you better serve yourself? How can you better serve the world that you that you're around? How can you better serve the people that you connect with on an everyday basis? How can you better serve those folks that you'll meet in the future at some point? Preparing yourself today. That's all we can do today, right? That's all we can do today. We can prepare ourselves right now for those wonderful times in life. Picture it in your mind, picture it in your mind, plan it out and pursue it. Picture it in your mind, plan it out and pursue it. And I'm telling you, you'll see some great things. You'll see a profit at the end of the end of the day. You'll see a profit at the end of the day because you've taken the time to picture it in your mind, plan it out and pursue it. And I'm telling you, God will do it. He will do it. Be persistent in your pursuit as well. And you'll see God offer you a tremendous, tremendous thing. One thing I will talk to you about is posturing yourself as well. If you posture yourself, posture. We know we look at posture as being sitting up erect and having our back straight and the whole deal. That's in a natural posture. But there's a posture in the spirit realm that allows us to receive what the Lord has for us. A posture that says I'm confident. A posture that says I, I'm alert. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive to the will of God being done in me. So I am postured and able to receive what God has for me. So I'm able to posture, posture to receive healing. Postured to receive prosperity, postured, postured to receive the word of the living God, postured to receive correction, postured to receive forgiveness, postured to receive anything that God has for us. All things that pertain to life and godliness, he wants us to be postured to receive that. So we're not waiting for anything. We're waiting for anything. Let's go ahead. And we do a lot of prayer, of course. We do a lot of prayer. We do a lot of uh, picturing with things we see in our mind's eyes that we begin to plan it out and we begin to pursue it and begin to posture ourselves and, and persist and, and do, do what we have to do to make things go be effectively. And then at the end of the day, we have a chance to profit. Now, profit's not always just about financial profit, but profit is being at a better place than we have been in the past and seeing ourselves being better off because of what we've done. Our time of prayer, our time of picturing, our time of planning, our time of persisting. You hear that? 